with the wet spring that we've had, in many cases, farmers and ranchers are going to want to put up some uh, of the wheat hay that perhaps won't make it to a grain crop or some of the cool uh, grasses such as fescue in order to have uh, feed for the cows next winter. As we're putting those hays up, I think we want to really be careful about the moisture content in those hay crops or in the meadows that, that we're cutting. Once we get the, it dry enough in those fields and in the meadows to where we can get equipment in there, I think we also want to consider the moisture content of the hay before we put it in a bale. If at all possible, we'd like to have it completely cured before we uh, go ahead and bale it. At this time of the year with these frequent showers, that's often very difficult. But putting hay in a bale when it's a high moisture, uh, has a high moisture content can certainly be very, very dangerous. If you look at this particular chart, it gives us an indication of the percent moisture and how it impacts the hay in the bale. If it's less than 10% moisture, then it's actually pretty dry and uh, pretty crusty, certainly not a danger in terms of a potential fire. We'd like the hay to be in the 10 to 15% range, that way that uh, we may get a little bit of temperature rise on the high end of that moisture content, but for the most part, that's ideal in terms of putting it in the hay bale and storing it. Once we get past 15, then we have the possibility of that hay uh, beginning to mold as it's stored later on. Uh, but if it stays less than 20%, that's about all that we can expect to happen. Once we get over 20% moisture as it's going into that hay bale, now fire becomes a, a real possibility. As we get above 25% moisture, if the uh, hay is going into the bale at that kind of moisture level, then quite frankly, we're uh, going to have uh, certainly some heat damage to the hay itself and the, the possibility of fire becomes a real high risk. What happens is as this uh, high moisture hay is being put into a bale, two uh, different reactions take place. First of all, just a biochemical reaction of the hay itself uh, with the moisture that's pretty normal and is going to occur in hay that's uh, say 15% or less and it may warm the hay to as high as 110 degrees, but if it gets no hotter than that, it's no problem. Once we get into those higher moisture ranges and then a m metabolic change takes place due to the microorganisms that are going to be stored in any hay. And with the higher moisture contents and these microorganisms get very, very active, that metabolic activity takes over and the temperature increase becomes rather sharp rather quickly. If it gets above 150 degrees inside that bale, then other uh, metabolic activity, other biochemical changes take place, and that temperature change can go from 150 to 400 in a very short period of time. Of course, at that stage, it's burning the hay, probably going to burst into flames and, and cause a real disaster on our, not only the, our, our hay, but anything that might be close around it. Therefore, I'd suggest that uh, if we're concerned at all about the moisture content of the hay that we put up, number one, let's don't store it next to other good hay that we know is safe and something that we're going to need, or certainly not store it close to any uh, buildings to where if it does catch on fire, it would also burn down something that's, that's even more valuable. We can also purchase a hay moisture tester. And those things will range in price from about 50 bucks to as high as about $400, depending upon how often you would use it and how uh, easily read you want it to be. But there's a lot of different ones that are on the market. And they can help you uh, understand the moisture content before you put it in the bale. Once you get it in the bale, then you may want to consider a temperature probe to check it every so often to make sure that it's staying in uh, one of these ranges below 120 degrees to where it's uh, most likely going to store safely. Again, these things are commercially available or you can make a homemade probe that you uh, put just a small cheap uh, thermometer down into uh, through the probe to check the temperature inside the bale. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about uh, hay storage and preventing fires in uh, possibly wet to hay, go to the SunUp website. 
We've put several links there to important pieces of information about preventing uh, hay loss due to fires. Go to the SUNUP website, sunup.okstate.edu, and that'll give you even more information about preventing fires and how to store potentially wet hay. We hope this helps you as you go through this haying season, and we certainly look forward to visiting with you again next week on SUNUP's Cow-Calf Corner.